Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2 with our famous world traveler, gourmet, not a chef, but a gourmand himself, uh, John Mariani. John, thanks for joining us again. A great pleasure as always. Good morning, John. How are you? I'm very well. I just got back. My doctor and gave me a clean bill of health for 2021. Now all I need is a vaccine and I'm going to be just vim and vigor personified. Then you'll, be a, then you'll be a traveling gourmet again. Like, oh, you bet you're... <laughs> yes. So by the way, I just, I heard a rumor, not so much a rumor because we know it's true, that you are a radio personality. Are you not? Well, on Celebrating Act Two, I have been for quite some time. And it's quite, you know, the, the groupies are hard to, to, to deal with, but I, I will. But yes, that's true. And, you know, the name of this show is Celebrating Act Two, which is all about we who have gotten into senior citizen status and what's left to do. I mean, what do I, I can't go knock on a door and get like a bag groceries or something. And I'm just useless. And I mean, this show proves all the guests that you have on that that's far from far from even the case for uh, anybody with um, with still the vim and vigor, as I said, to go on with uh, getting out of your bed and in the morning and biting your way through the restraints and uh, going on with life. And <clears throat> this came along through pure serendipity. Uh, old uh, acquaintance, not a real friend of mine, William O'Shaughnessy is a um, broadcaster here in New York, out of New Rochelle, New York, where John Cohen and I went to school at Iona College around, or Iona Prep around the corner. Um, and O'Shaughnessy and I have known each other. We share a, a love of food and and wine, and um, he's a great rock on tour. And it just occurred to me that we no longer have shows on like uh, Garrison Kaler and Gene uh, Shepard, who just used to be able to talk. Gene Shepard is the one, of course, who, who wrote um, The Christmas Story, which was made of the movie, and Garrison Kaler of um, uh, Lake Wobegon days. And for years and years and years, these guys went on. and They had great, great following. And I said, you know, I have no desire to do television, but I'd love to have a radio show. Maybe I could spin all records, but that's that's been done and done. I said, you know, I'm going to do a show because it's out of New Rochelle, which is in Westchester County, about called Almost Golden, which is the title of a memoir my brother and I wrote about growing up in the Bronx in the 1950s, which was an almost golden time. And I call it that, and it's going to be about everything about that was good and wonderful and not so good about uh, the Bronx and Westchester County as long as it happened in the 1950s and 60s. And so I bounced this off him in an email and it came back and says, when do you want to start? I said, huh? <laughs> and I said, when do you want to start? How about Wednesday at 11 o'clock? That, that, that's a good slot in, in the morning. You can, you can do it every single week? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I sheepishly says, is there any money in this? And he says, of course not. But it does go to show you that I now have something at the age of 75 to add to my other not previous accomplishments as much as the virtual gourmet, as well as writing for Forbes, as well as writing four or five books during this, um, uh, well, not four or five, but two books during this pandemic. So what's my next chapter? It just came out of the blue, but it was my idea. And I said, how about a show? What's the chances? And it's happened. So I have a so, quick question for you. Does that include a, 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 a make-believe town that uh, surrounded on uh, uh, maybe on the shores of Lake, uh, Lake uh, Wobe here? I mean, have you? Uh, it's, it's the shores of the Long Island Sound, which is what I lived across from uh, back in the Bronx. And um, uh, it, a lot of it is based on what I remember up until the age of 10. And my brother, who was five years older, he did a wonderful reading of his story about VJ Day which happened just before I was born. And he was only like six years old and remembers that day like it happened yesterday. So, and I've been so fortunate. I mean, the people I've had on in the last month have included um, the person who happens to be my second cousin. She's a crooner. She's been a crooner for years, made, made albums and CDs. Yeah, it's a wonderful singer. Whom you know, John. And she was on talking about the so-called great American songbook and what happened to it in the in the 1950s and how it has persisted 
uh, well into our current uh, era in people like Diana Krall and many other great jazz singers. And then the next week I had an authority on the films of um, Stanley Kubrick, who was born in the Bronx, believe it or not, and went to uh, DeWitt Clinton High School, and he made his first movie, a little 15-minute documentary, um, in the Bronx, about a Bronx uh, fighter. And that was fascinating. And um, then we had another guy I went to, to college with, a very good friend, who's become the poet laureate of uh, the Bronx and certainly of Irish American um, uh, poetry and uh, music, who worked for the um, uh, Smithsonian and is very well known here and uh, uh, through his, his work and his own CDs, Terry, uh, Terrence Winch. Um, it was great to, great. To, and he, he's written a lot about the Bronx. He grew up on Daly Avenue, which was when he was born was 100% Irish. And then by the time he left, when he was about 19 or 20, it was almost 100% Puerto Rican and black. And his was the only Irish family left. And we've had a guy on who does tours of the Bronx. Um, we had a wonderful woman, um, Sally Reganard, whose son was killed in 9-11 uh, in the World Trade Center. And she went on a crusade to prove that those buildings were never safe in the first place. And the door she knocked on, the, 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 the walls she banged her head on, it was a fascinating story. And, um, and this week coming up, and I'll tell you how everybody can listen to it, um, on WVOX, uh, is, is uh, about early Westerns of the 1940s and 50s and 60s. Um, before Westerns got serious, like High Noon and The Searchers and Shane, these were the B Westerns with John, John Gene Autry and Roy Rogers and Randolph Scott. And uh, I have an authority on that, so he's going to be talking about that, a very nostalgic piece. So uh, that's the basic premise, and I think I have enough to go on for the next five years, week after week. <laughs> so many topics I want to talk about, and with those who went to Iona Prep. Anyone come to mind? Hmm. Mm, let's see if I can think of anybody. No, no, can't think of one. Hey, John, you know what I like about the radio show? I've listened to well, not every episode, but every well, probably at least half the episodes. Uh, what I like about your radio show is that it is not, even though it's a, a small radio station in New Rochelle, and it's probably only heard in Westchester and the Bronx, um, it's really not about Westchester and the Bronx. It's really about um, the times of the 50s and 60s, okay. and anybody of an age, whatever that age is, can relate to it. You know, Even okay. if you were in, I don't know, Minneapolis or St. Louis, you relate to those years. Well, I, I realized almost from the first episode that, first of all, I could not carry on just being nostalgic and, oh, the old candy store, which I will be talking about at some point. Ah, uh, the Bronx Zoo. Um, unless you talk about them in a beautiful and lyrical way and have authorities on who know much more than I do about uh, any particular subject. And uh, because people, again, there was no such place as Lo Lake Wobegon. But millions of people who listened to Garrison Keller um, wanted to believe there was because it was so much of what he talked about was like their childhoods, too. Sure. And Gene Shepard, who grew up, I think, in Columbus, Ohio, or um, where, where uh, the Christmas story takes place, um, that was our hometown. That was my city. That was, uh, that was everybody. And that's what I want to achieve rather than, as you say, just talk about the candy store on the corner um, sure. and, sure. and have authorities on on the nope. other hand, John, on the other hand, it's not pure nostalgia. Yeah. Um, I remember the the episode you did with Lynn, mm -hmm. uh, and that was really about American music. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, before we were born, when we were growing up, and today. Uh, she talked about music today. So <laughs> I, I think it's a really good series, and you're a natural for it, because you are a true raconteur. You can... Thank you. Unfortunately, you can talk about anything forever and ever and ever. <laughs> but, but, uh, but uh, John, um, be, beyond your um, uh, mentioning it's WVOX, can people find uh, this recorded on the internet someplace so that they can listen to it, uh, if not live, at least uh, go to an archive of uh, uh, the shows? I thought you would never ask, Art. As a matter of fact, anybody can, despite the fact that it is only 500 watts, 
anybody can listen to me this coming Wednesday at 11 a.m. live on WVOX, Voice of, Vo Voice of the People, VOX. And uh, on the internet, it's probably something like VOX.com, right? Exactly. Go to WVOX.com yeah. and it streams live 24 hours a day, including my show. Then, after the show, my show ends, about an hour later, it is archived. So if you go to the WVOX.com and then click onto my show, um, even if it's six weeks from now, you can listen to any of the shows that I've done, including the one I'm doing this this Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, we are global. We, you could listen to it in Bangkok uh, if you like. Oh, Mr. Shai Mr. Shai Gourmet, what's the name of that show? My show? Yes. Almost Golden. Almost Golden on WVOX.com and people any place in the known world and perhaps some unknown places who has access to the Internet can go and listen to the, the series, which is wonderful. As well as buy the book Almost Golden that my brother and I wrote, which is what the show is based on. They go to Amazon.com and to my virtual gourmet, which is virtual gourmet or JohnMariani.com. I'm out there. I feel like Tom Jode. Where are the cops beating up on a guy? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, John, I hope this doesn't mean that you're, uh, now that you are a multimedia mogul, I hope it doesn't mean that you are going to bid farewell to those of us who help you achieve such great heights, meaning celebrating Act Two. You're still going to oh, appear. Yeah. I will never forget the little people who helped me get there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, Having been one of the little people, I think, with that, maybe we ought to say goodbye. And we'll look forward to your next interview uh, on Celebrating Act Two, where we'll actually talk about food and travel and stuff like that. And congratulations on your amazing uh, report from your uh, doctor. Oh, it feels so good. Just to lose, you know, I never get on a scale. Never. I go by how my jackets and pants fit. And then when I skip the scale, it was great. It was a great day. Uh, uh, Coleman, <laughs> that's what we have to do is we have to put on our jacket and pants from time to time. <laughs> that's true. <I> think <laughs> that's sure. fine if, if, you, if you're like John and you use the standard that you start to swim in your jacket and pants. <laughs> I use the other one. Jeez, I, I, I need to put on a little bit more weight. Yeah? A good steak. That's what I need. Yeah. Cotton shrinks. Okay. I, th I think that we've gotten to the point beyond the point to say yeah. thank you, John, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy New Year, guys. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.